here we are in the Tio Aru uh, Valley of uh, Tahiti, actually retracing the route that Charles Darwin took on his three-day inland expedition up the island. He came up this valley and followed this river, and uh, we're going to see if we can retrace uh, the actual route that Darwin took. Let's go. First step, <laughs> cross the river. <laughs> came to Tahiti, he's interested in, he's interested in volcanic islands. So a lot of what he was doing as he was coming up this valley is he's paying attention to the, actu the actual substance of this island. Yeah. What is it made from? It and he's constantly speculating yeah. on how it was constructed. Hey. Hey. Crossing number one, done. <laughs> <laughs> Well, here I've got a page of, of Darwin's notes. And here it is, Darwin's almost illegible handwriting. And he's describing this place. November 1835, Tahiti. The only part of the island which I visited is the northwest extremity. I also followed the river which joins the sea at Point Venus. I looked at the scenery with great interest. I believed I here saw the effect of running water continued through so long a succession of ages, and as to suffice to wear away several thousand feet in the thickness of solid strata. Well, Anthony just reminded us that uh, Darwin mentioned the circumference of the banana trees, so uh, I looked up the, the page in his notes written, <laughs> who knows, on this very spot. And he says, in the gloom of bananas, which is where we stand right now, uh, caught some fine eel. Banana, three to four foot circumference. And indeed, uh, looking at this impressive trunk, uh, you can see why Darwin bothered to pause, take out his pencil and write a little note about that. That was something exceptional. Evidence of how man can live by hand. Darwin was really impressed that the natives yeah. could just come out here in this forest and find everything they needed to live just with their bare hands. They could uh, gather food and make a little shelter. And didn't need any equipment. It, it feels like a, like a sponge and just the gentlest squeeze sends liquid oozing out of it in all directions. Uh, and this is uh, where reliably informed the <laughs> traditional, traditional Tahitian shampoo. Seems odorless. Yeah. Hmm. I'll, I'll try it tonight. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't know about you, John, but I'm enjoying it a lot. Yeah, I have to say with every passing second, uh, it's just such a, a joy to see that we are experiencing and seeing uh, all of these things that Darwin saw in this late stage in the voyage of the Beagle. I just can't get over th th that I'm here <laughs> and, and that I, I, you know, I've written about this place. I've researched Darwin's time here, but I never thought I'd actually be here. As we go along, I mean, bit by bit, it's all coming back to life, isn't yeah. it? I mean, more We're and seeing more, more and more things from the notes. Because yeah. the rest of Tahiti has changed a lot. I, I totally agree. I mean, I have a feeling now that we've come up here, we're in the real Tahiti. Yeah. It's a freshwater prawn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa, blimey, what was that? Was that an eel? We're looking for eels. We're looking for eels. See, yeah. But I, 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 saw, I see some small freshwater fish, uh, some of which Darwin captured and ate. Oh, there's something. Oh, I can see a very small eel. Oh, it's beautiful. Got him. Yeah. Got him. <laughs> yeah, me too. It's gonna give me time. That's brilliant. That's something Darwin didn't manage. <laughs> there are so many things I didn't appreciate having edited. Uh, Darwin's notes from Tahiti before, but now that I've actually come here, so many more things make sense. Yeah. It makes a lot more sense now. I mean, you have to, uh, you have to read it and then come and see it, but you have to come and see it and not just read it. Yeah. Which is a great thing why uh, this voyage is made possible. Absolutely. Yeah.